2060, 2060 Super, 70, 70 Super, 80, 80 Super, and the 2080 Ti. That's a lot of graphics cards. In fact, I don't think I've ever made a fort out of GPUs before, but with such a big lineup, it's also kind of confusing which ones you should actually buy, and I guess more importantly, which ones maybe you shouldn't buy. So for my testing, I'm using high graphics settings. I mean, you can of course always drop it to medium or low to get a better frame rate, but I'm more interested in what frame rates I can get while getting a great looking experience at 1080p, 1440p and 4K, and also with ray tracing and ray tracing off. Now, just to be clear, these are all my own conclusions. This is in no way sponsored by Nvidia or anyone else, although they did kindly send through these review samples. And if you do find this video helpful, then it would be amazing if you could click that little subscribe button below so I know to keep making these sorts of videos. Warning, this video contains a number of graphs, price performance percentages, and me saying the word RTX 20 something about a million times. Do not watch this while operating heavy machinery as it may cause drowsiness and symptoms of narcolepsy. It is recommended to watch the whole video to understand my conclusions, but for my final recommendations, feel free to skip to this point in the video. Consult your doctor if symptoms of ray tracing or the desire to lick the shiny silver bit of the supercards do not pass within three days. Okay, I'm gonna hit you with one conclusion straight away. If you're playing at 1080p or 1440p and just want to hit 60 FPS, you've got a basic 60 Hertz monitor using high settings in most current AAA games and you don't really care about ray tracing effects, I would go with the GTX 1660 Ti instead. For most of my casual gamer friends, this is the card I'd suggest. That said, if you would like something a little more future proof or maybe you want higher frame rates or you play at higher resolutions, then the RTX lineup makes more sense. All right, so let's get to the results. And I've tested all Nvidia's Founders Edition 20 series and supercards at stock speeds. But bear in mind, with Nvidia's one-click overclock, you can usually get about five to 10% boost. Okay, so in Metro, the 2060 is good for 91 FPS at 1080p and even 71 at 1440. So for a lot of people, that'll be just right, but it's not really ideal for RTX, but we'll come on to that. For high refresh 1080p, say 144Hz, then anything beyond the 2070 Super is diminishing returns. But the 2070 Super seems to be a great entry-level 4K60 card, but it'll probably need a mild overclock or for you to drop a setting or two to hit it every time. Now let's turn on those fancy ray tracing effects in Metro. And for this, you'll want a 2070 Super to get over 60 FPS with and without DLSS. The 2080 Super is the next logical step if you want even higher refresh rates, but don't expect it to do much more than 60 FPS at 4K. Of course, the 2080 Ti is a ray tracing monster, but you can get similar results by simply turning on DLSS with the 2080 Super and in the process saving about 400 pounds in cash. Next up, Apex, and interestingly, there's basically no difference between a 2060 Super and the older 2070, and there's also no difference between the 2070 Super and the regular 2080, even though both the Super cards are cheaper. If you've got a 60 Hz 1080p or 1440 monitor, then the 2060 is a great choice. For higher refresh though, I go with the 2060 Super, which at 16% faster is a little more future-proof thanks to the extra two gigs of VRAM. Again though, for higher refresh rates, I reckon the 2070 Super is where it's at. Beyond that, again, it's sort of diminishing returns. PUBG, my favorite, even though I'm still pretty terrible. But here, the 2060 is great. 126 FPS at 1080p, 84 FPS at 1440, both at ultra settings, which means that for most people, this will easily be fast enough. If you're after 144Hz 1080p though, then you'll probably wanna go for the 2060 Super. But if you are one of the 0.5% of gamers on Steam playing at 4K and you wanna get 60 FPS, then the 2070 Super is your entry point. Again, there's not really much between the 2060 Super and the 2070, and it's the same between the 2070 Super and the 2080, despite big differences in pricing. If you're looking for super high refresh rates though, say 240 hertz, then the 2080 Super looks like the best value. It's a similar story in Battlefield 5. 140 FPS at 1080p and 103 at 1440 using high settings with the 2060. That's seriously good performance. For high refresh 1440p, then I still think the 2070 Super is best value. I also tested BF5 with high ray tracing settings at 1440, and clearly the 2060 is ideal if you are limited to 60 FPS, and it would just be overkill at 1080p. 
This really goes to show just how far RTX ray tracing has come. It was basically unusable at launch, and now here we are with the 2060 getting 73 FPS without DLSS enabled. That's pretty impressive. So with those results, let's try and narrow the field a little bit. For my money, the 2060 Super is basically the new 2070, so let's get rid of that. The 2080 is also out of the running as it's only 5% faster than the 2070 Super, but it does cost 15% more, so not the best value. Now the 2080 Super is around 180 pounds more expensive than the 2070 Super, but it's only about 15% faster on average, which isn't great value, but I'm gonna leave this on the table and I'll tell you why in a second. And finally, the 2080 Ti. This is 57% more expensive than the 2080 Super. And how much of a boost? 11%. So yeah, the TI is pretty terrible value for money, although it does have 11 gigabytes of VRAM. So if you're playing at super, super high resolutions, then I guess that's handy, but still value for money, ouch. So let's look at it another way. In terms of cost per frame, the 2060 and the 2060 Super offer similar value. And the 2070 Super also stands out as offering better value than the cards above it. So then, recommendations. Well, for 1080p, in my tests, a 2060 will get you between 90 and 125 FPS at high settings, which is great. And it offers around a 15% performance boost and ray tracing compared to the 1660 Ti. So most of us won't really need anything more than this. Now the 2060 Super offers similar value actually, but it's only worth considering if you've got a 144 hz panel. At 1440p, again, the 2060 will get you 70 to 100 FPS in my test. But that said, the 2060 Super with the eight gig of VRAM would be a better bet in the long term and it offers, as I say, pretty similar value for money. So for 1440p, the 2060 Super is my pick. Now for high refresh 1440p and even 4K 60 gaming, for now, I'd say the 2070 Super would be my choice. It manages 60 to 70 FPS at 4K, but as games get more demanding, it might require you to lower the graphic settings a little bit. But if you're gaming at 4K and want a reliable 65 to 80 FPS range, or maybe you have a super high refresh 240Hz 1080p monitor, then I think the 2080 Super is the best bet. For my money, the 2080 effectively becomes the new flagship card, as the 2080 Ti at 1100 pounds is pretty poor value. A quick mention of ray tracing, and at 1440p 60, again, the 2060 Super is the entry level card I go for, but for high refresh rates or even 4K 60 with RTX, then I go for at least where is it? The 2070 Super. So this video has obviously been focused on Team Green and their RTX lineup, but also consider AMD's RX 5700, which is between the 2060 and the 2060 Super in terms of price performance, or even the higher 5700 XT, which is between the 60 Super and the 70 Super. But keep in mind that these don't support hardware ray tracing to the same extent as these Nvidia cards. So you have to kind of weigh up how important ray tracing is to you. Thank you for sticking with me through that. I know it was a lot to take in, but I do hope it was useful and it gives you an idea of what card you should buy or maybe even if you should just save your money for now. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Do hit that like and subscribe button below if you want to see more of my videos and let me know what card you currently have and if you are looking to upgrade which one you would go for in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat. 5% faster than the 2070 Super, but it costs, what if I just... <laughs> How's that happened? Oh, it's magnetic. I'm not sure if you've seen my little tech chat plasticky figurine thing, but I keep it on my desk sometimes and it's just... <laughs>